In this video, we will be discussing the first order integrated rate law equation. And it may interest you on why is it necessary to bring in calculus and bring in an integral into our chemical equations. And it has to do with the fact that rates change during reactions. And so because rate changes, it's sometimes hard to find uh, what's going to be the new concentration at some time t, some or concentration or reactant. So when you look at it, and we've looked at this before, we look at graph of the change in the concentration of the reactant versus the change in time, you can see that it's a curve. So when things are on a curve, say I'm at this point, it's very difficult using normal uh, mathematical techniques to go, okay, well, how long or how much time will it take me for me to get to this point? In reality, what we want is a straight line. So we want to take this um, graph of concentration versus time and straighten it out. So there is some calculus involved, and I'm not going to talk about it today. And um, at one point, I will put up the derivative um, equation. So how did they get to this integrated rate law expression? But the first thing you need to know is that um, the equation is going to look different between first and second order reactions. So that's always the first question when I say, I look at one of these uh, you know, questions, the first thing I ask is, is my reaction first or second order? And remember, you can't get that information from the uh, bounced reaction itself. You have to get it by some other means. So when we look at this, when we say first order, remember we we're saying that the sum of all the rate law coefficients and our rate law expression are equal to one. And we previously discussed what our rate law expression is. It just is rate is equal to K times the concentration of reactants raised to some power. But in this case, because we designated we're talking about first order, there um, can only be one reactant here, and it can only have uh, the uh, coefficient of one here. And then also when we say first order, we have locked in the units. So the units on K here, and remember units change, um, the units on K change with the overall reaction order. So the units on K here are one over second. So this is always true for first order reactants, the units on K is equal to uh, one over seconds. So um, what they've done is, um, they've taken an original uh, description of how we find a rate and they took an integral of it. Like I said, I'll show this in a different video. But when we're done, we uh, get this equation that shows a relationship between the initial concentration of a reactant and the final concentration of a reactant over some time t. And then k is still the constant. k is this k right there. And we're using these things a little bit differently. So when we go through, um, you know, normally we use uh, concentrations of molarity here, but they can be other concentrations. K is, uh, you know, generally um, one over seconds, and then time is usually in seconds. But one of the things you look at in this form, you can see that this integrated, uh, first order integrated rate law equation has the line form y equals mx plus, plus b. So here, if we make a graph of um, the natural log of our uh, concentration at time t, versus uh, T itself, we get a new graph here where the slope is equal to negative K. So now we're graphing the natural log of concentration versus time. And now we don't have that curve. We have a straight line now. And then the slope of this line is equal to negative times our rate law constant, K. So there's a few different ways you can put these things together, um, or a few different ways you can look at this equation. Um, we had the line form of it, but typically when we do calculations using the first order integrated rate law, we use this version of it where the, the two concentrations are inside the natural log. Um, also, what's nice about uh, the linear form of this equation, um, by doing some experiments, when you look at the change in concentration versus time, and you make a plot of the natural log of concentration of time, you can actually find K. So this is one of the ways you can find K for a reaction experimentally.